Hey hey everybody, this is Larry, this is me going with Q4 of the Weekly Contest 246, Minimum Absolute Difference Queries. So this one was very hard for me, I don't know, I, I think it's just one of those days where where something's just a little bit off and I wasn't able to get this one. Um, though I, I tried a lot of different techniques and to be honest, I, I, I spent an entire hour, I actually did not solve this one during the contest, full disclosure, but after I, I looked at a couple of solutions, um, it, it, you know, I, I implemented from scratch, from my scratch, like in three minutes. So it was just, I just missed a, a thing, which I'll point out later. Um, so hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, show me some love because I'm really sad that I didn't get it today. Uh, and I was miss the Nets game uh, where they went into overtime and lost game seven. Eh, kind of also sad, uh, but you know, Giannis, Giannis is good. Anyway, so for this problem... Uh, the key thing to know, and I did actually notice this during the contest, but I, I wasn't able to take advantage of it. And full disclosure is that I think I went a little heavy on the on the crazy high power algorithms. I was trying to think, okay, is there a way I can abuse or not abuse, just use like square root deconversation? Can I use a uh, um, segment tree can i use uh sparse tables so i definitely went a little bit all out on the crazy parts and, I, and that's what got me even though i did notice this so i was also trying to figure out if there's a way i can abuse um pigeonhole principle or something like that and i did attempt that but then i think at the end it didn't really work out and i did have some other binary search solution but the binary search solution didn't um didn't feel fast enough especially on python um but i will go over so all those things I just said, if you don't know what that means, that's fine, because apparently that's not the solution. The solution is much simpler, and as you can see, a lot of people got it pretty quickly. So, so yeah. Um, and sad thing was that I was top 10 or so after three problems, so this one really... Uh, um, this, this, this thing really eh, was sad. But anyway, so... So yes, how do you solve this? So the thing to abuse is that the number is uh, less than 100, right? And, and what does that mean? That means that you can brute force, uh, you know, let's say if there's a magic function that tells you within any range, if within these range, it tells you every number that's in it, uh, in, within that range, well, there can only be at most 100 numbers, right? Because of this thing. Um, I did try to think about those lines, but like I said, during the contest, I was wrong. But but now, you know, for each query, you only have to do 100 operations and then get the best answer from it. Because if you have all 100 numbers, then you know, then you could sort them, you could play around with them, say, and then get the minimum uh, absolute difference between two adjacent elements or something like that, and then get the answer that way, right? Um, and because, and you could do this math, We'll do the math later together, but but if we had that magic function, um, this times 100 will be fast enough. So it turns out that the way to do this is with prefix sum, uh, which like also abusing on the fact that this is less than 100. To be honest, I did think about this a little bit during the contest, but I really struggled with the idea that this would be fast enough. Um, yeah, I just really didn't think it would be fast enough, uh, especially in Python, but... I, I should have at least tried and give it an honest attempt. But okay. So what is so what what I did with prefix sum here is to to okay. Um is yeah, to keep track of every number for every or the count of every number at every index. Um and what, what I mean by that is you know, a prefix count if you will. Not maybe a prefix sum, but uh, but for example, you have, let, let's just say you have this number. In the first, in the first cell, what I keep track of here is essentially, um, yeah, uh, in the first way, we have one four, right? So that's the prefix. Um, in the second index, you have a four and a five. Um, and then in the third index, you have two, four, and a five. And then the fourth index, you have two, four, four, five. And then, of course, you compress these to, to two twos, say. Um, and, you know, I mean, I know that I'm doing it with a essentially an array of 100 elements. So, but that's basically the idea here behind this, right? Um, yeah. 
and this is accepted. I, you know, I did, after the contest, I did solve it, um, quote unquote solve. But yeah, so this will give you this count. Um, and then at the way end, so then given this, we can just do a brute force on all 100 numbers. So yeah, that's the idea. For each query, we go, okay, does all equal one, does that exist in the range? And it's in the range if the number of numbers starting from the finish minus the beginning, if this is greater than zero, that means that um, the number of counts has changed within that range, meaning that that number exists. So then that means that we keep track of R. And and because we we count R from zero to, or from one to a hundred, um, you can, that means that the minimum absolute difference will be in two adjacent elements. And because they're in two adjacent elements, we just keep track of the last element used, and then we update the last, and we update the best equal to R minus, the current number minus the last number. And and yeah, and this, these are just very simple rules to check with best as you, you know, this is my infinity value. Um, if this is the case, that means that the only one number exists in that range. So we do negative one, otherwise we turn the best and that's it. Uh, the, the tricky thing is just the complex analysis, which I guess I was really bad about it today. Um, and in this case, this is O of N times, uh, O of N times R, where, where R is equal to the range, which is 100 or is 1 to 100. And here, this is O of Q times R, where, well, R is equal to range, again. Um, and, and yeah, so as a result, this whole function is going to be O of N times R plus Q times R. And that's pretty much it. Um, and in terms of space, it is, o, it is N times R because of this array here. Um, yeah. Uh, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. I actually did record it, but but to be honest, the first like hour I was just stuck on a couple of things, so it wasn't that interesting. So I'm not, not going to show the video. Um, let me know what you think about this problem. Did you do it correctly? A lot of people did, so I didn't. So eh, congrats if you beat me. Leave in the comments below if you beat me today. Uh, and mad props to that. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Uh, have a good week. Stay cool, stay tight, um, and to good mental health. Bye-bye.